ASDIP still includes the design of shared connections, but how do you actually enter the information into the program and how do you complete and optimize the design, particularly for a beam to column web shared connection? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design completely from scratch a beam to column web shared connection using ASDIP Steel. Let's get started. As an example, consider the beam to column web shared connection shown here, which is part of a multi story building. Design the shared connection for the loads and the materials shown, assuming that continuity plates will be required due to moment connections at the column flanges. This means that the beam flanges will be coped to get room for these continuity plates at these areas, top and bottom. The column size is W12 by 50, the beam is W12 by 30. Also, there will be a similar connection at the other side of the column web. So let's go to ASDIP Steel. When you open ASDIP Steel, you see the project manager where you can see the modules included in the package, base plates and anchorage, steel columns, steel and composite beams, shear connections, and moment connections. In this case, we're gonna create a calculation for a shear connection. Let's call it example. And the calculation has been added to the tree. Double click on the tree. And this is the template for a shear connection in ASDIP Steel. The first step is to enter the geometry information given in the statement of the problem. We're gonna specify a double angle connection. It's gonna be connected to the column web. So let's select this option here. Then in the support tab, we enter the column size. We go to the steel database. And we're gonna specify W12 by 50, which is the size of the column. Select. And according to the statement of the problem, there will be a similar shear connection at the other side of the web. So let's mark this checkbox. Let's go to the beam tab. Here we can select the beam size is W12 by 30. Go to the database, W12 by 30, select and the section has been added to the calculation. We can see the connection graphically as we go. We can see here that it is connected to the web. We know that there will be continuity plates at top and bottom due to moment connections at the column flanges. So the beam flanges need to be coped top and bottom as well. This can be specified here in the beam tab. Top flange is coped, length, let's say four inches and height one and a half, 1.5. Same at the bottom, four inches, one and a half high. So it's been coped already to get room for uh, the continuity plates. Let's go to the angle tab. Here we can specify the clip angle we are using a double angle connection here. Typical angle sizes is four by three and a half to get clearance for uh, the bolts, uh, both legs. In this case, the eccentricity of the beam is gonna be zero, since it's gonna be coped top and bottom. So need to be centered like this. And the edge distance is one and a quarter, which is appropriate for a three quarter uh, bolts. Let's go to the materials tab. Here we enter the material properties for the support, beam, angles, bolts, and welds. We'll keep all this information as it is. Go to the loads tab. Here we enter the loads given in the statement of the problem. We're gonna use the LRFD uh, method. We know that the dead load is 15 kips and the live load is 20 kips. That's the vertical reaction of the beam. Of course, since this beam is duplicated at the other side of the web, this load will be applied at the other side of the web as well. So the load at the web is uh, double. Up to here we have finished all the input information. Let's go to the other glance tab. This is a summary of the results. Here we can see all the limit states applicable to this design. And here we see the combined uh, loads per load combination. 
The program shows what the limit state is controlling. In this case, is this one, the last one, the cope beam flexural local buckling. And uh, the controlling load combinations are the number two and number three. So these two load combinations are failing by this uh, limit state. This particular limit state has changed in the latest edition of the AISC. So let's go to the design criteria here, design codes, and select the latest code, AISC 360.16. So this calculation has been updated to the latest code, and now everything is passing. Let's go to the condensed tab, scroll down to the limit states. Here we can see that the controlling limit state is beam bearing bulk holes. So the design strength is 50.8, corresponding to this limit state, that uh, compared to the load combination is 50, very close. So the design ratio is 0.98. In order to lower this design ratio, we would need to specify another beam size with a thicker web, since this uh, limit state controls the web thickness, is, is the bearing ball holes at the beam. However, we can see here that the next limit state that we control is flexural local buckling, which is 53.3, not so far from 50.8. So even if we select a thicker uh, web, this limit state will control, which is not so, so far. We can see here also that these design checks do not apply to this example. Also, the geometric constraints are OK, meaning that there are no problems with the uh, interfering elements. If we go to the Detail tab, scroll down, these are the combined loads. Here are the connection strength calculations with all the limit states, exposed formulas, and also references to the AISC code. Here are the geometric constraints checks. Everything is passing. Graphically, you can see here the final design. The column W12 by 50, the beam W12 by 30 is connected by a double angle and bolted connection, three balls, three quarter of an inch diameter each. Connection strength ratio is 0.98, design check is zero because they don't apply, and geometric constraint check is okay. Let's see if we can use a single angle connection instead of a double angle connection, just with a click of a mouse, just select here, and we can see here all the limit states that, are, that will be failing Let's see if we can optimize the size of the angles in this case. Go to the Angle tab. Instead of 3 8 thickness angle, let's say quarter of an inch, 0.25. And we can see that the connection is, is still OK. So this is an improvement. It's an optimization process. Let's go to the Graph tab. This is the final design. As you can see, it's very easy to design beam to column web shear connections using ASIP steel, which otherwise would take a lot of time of effort if you try to do it by hand. If you like the software, please visit the website www.azipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.